Well, welcome back. Gleanings from the Minor Prophets. I'm resuming our Bible study today. Um, two weeks ago, we finished the book of Haggai. Now we move to the book of Habakkuk. Um, remember, we got out of chronological order for, for just a little bit, one book. Now we're back in to chronological order. Um, as we recall Haggai, the end of Haggai, the people of Judah were out from under the Babylonian captivity and they were placed under Persian rule. Now, the Lord had put it into the heart and mind of King Cyrus the Great of Persia to let his people go to rebuild Jerusalem and the second temple. The Lord put it in Cyrus's heart for his people to do that, for the Lord's people, the remnant people, to return to Jerusalem, to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. The Lord, through Cyrus, Persia, other nations, uh, provided everything that the remnant people needed to rebuild their city, uh, the daughter Zion, the pinnacle of God's love, and the temple, the second temple where the Spirit of God resided. So we got out of chronological order, uh, jumped to Haggai, and now we're backing up to the book of Habakkuk. Um, Darius, King Darius, took over after King Cyrus passed, and still the Lord had it in Darius's heart to let his remnant people go to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. So we pick back up today in Habakkuk. Um, and uh, today's just a beautiful day to be sharing the Word of God together. I love this time of year. Yesterday was a beautiful day. The sun was shining um, Monday, and then today's Tuesday because I make the video early to be posted for Wednesday for you to watch any time that you want to. Um, but today's a little overcast, but I like days like today. It's a little dreary, um, reminding us that winter is right around the corner. I enjoy a cup of hot tea. I, I bought myself some peach mint loose leaf tea and put it in a French press and made me a cup of tea. It's really nice, really, really good companion to the Word of God and the weather. Let's pray together and we'll get into our study today. Father, we thank you once again for the privilege of gathering around your Word. Lord, your Word is precious to us. It should be precious to us. It is. And Lord, we thank you for meeting us through the pages of your Word, through the power of the Holy Spirit. As we read your Word, the Holy Spirit takes your words and translates them to us as we study it and, and meditate on it. And they plant deep within our hearts and our spirits and they take root. And we live your Word. Lord, that's my prayer for all of your people, that we can live the Word, not just read it and study it, but live it. And we thank you for meeting us today around it, in it, through it, Father. Just open our eyes, open our hearts to receive your word and understand it so that we can make proper application. We love you. We praise you, Lord. We exalt, we magnify your holy name. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the service that we had Sunday where everyone was able to share their stories. Oh, what a wonderful time of worship it was. Thank you for that privilege. Lord, now we turn again to the, to the Minor Prophets, the book of Habakkuk, teach us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I hope that that's your prayer, that the Lord continue to teach you through His Word. He meets us through His Word. The Holy Spirit teaches us the Word. Well, today as we begin <clears throat> the book of Habakkuk, I just want to share with you um, a simple overview. Now, Habakkuk, three chapters. Again, short like Haggai was. Um, don't let the size of a book fool you. There's a lot that we can learn from the Minor Prophets. There's a lot that we can learn this week going forward from the book of Habakkuk. And that's our focus study. So today, just a simple overview to the book. Now, Habakkuk was a prophet, but he was unlike the other prophets in that Habakkuk didn't hear from God and then tell the people. 
Habakkuk himself had a conversation with the Lord. That's the difference between Habakkuk and other minor prophets. Habakkuk, his conversation was here, he and God. He never delivered a message to the people. Habakkuk was written during the final decades of the southern kingdom, Judah, before they were taken into the Babylonian 70-year captivity. So this is prior to the book of Haggai. The book of Habakkuk is structured around a series of conversations between the prophet Habakkuk and the Lord prior to Judah's captivity. Remember Haggai, last study we looked at two weeks ago, the people were returning to Jerusalem. Well, Habakkuk is two decades before that captivity, before that return of the remnant people. It's structured around a series of conversations between Habakkuk and the Lord. Habakkuk speaks to the Lord, and then in turn the Lord speaks back to Habakkuk. Habakkuk's conversations with the Lord, his talking with the Lord, was through Hebrew lament poetry. Now, if you recall from our present sermon series, laments are words of grief, words of deep suffering, either in written form to be read or in song form to be sung. In Habakkuk's case, his written laments were based on his personal struggles. Habakkuk struggled in his time. He struggled mainly with the question, is the Lord good? Now we know as 2022 Christians, soon to be 2023 Christians, the Lord is good. But we have to understand that within the context of the Old Testament writings, they questioned, is the Lord good? We know He is, but within the context of the Old Testament, and even possibly things that you go through, things that I go through, there may be those moments of, where is the Lord? In our culture, in what's happening around the world. Is the Lord good? Where is He? Why isn't He acting? Why doesn't He return? Now, those are questions that I'm sure, I'm confident that we have all had at one time or another in our lives. So we can relate to the book of Habakkuk. Being that Habakkuk was written within the final decades before Judah was taken into the Babylonian captivity, the laments focused on the pervading sin, the pervading evil of the then culture in Jerusalem and surrounding nations. The way the book of Habakkuk works is Habakkuk brings a complaint before the Lord regarding injustice, regarding suffering, regarding sin, regarding grief. Then the Lord answers Habakkuk back. He answers Habakkuk's complaints. Habakkuk is poetic conversation, lament poetic conversation in ping pong form. Habakkuk speaks, he questions, he complains. Ping pong, the Lord returns an answer. Now, as we read and study Habakkuk, we'll notice that some of Habakkuk's main questions were, why does the Lord allow evil? Why would the Lord allow His people to be punished by a nation even more wicked than they themselves were? And why did the Lord not destroy the Chaldeans or the Babylonians? Those are some questions that were rattling around in Habakkuk's mind and in his heart. Why does the Lord allow evil? We may think that ourselves. Why would the Lord allow his people to be punished by a nation more wicked than they were? That one may not be so necessarily in resonating with us, unless we think about Russia. Why did the Lord not destroy the Babylonians? Those are some questions, again, rattling around in the heart and mind of Habakkuk. Well, I want to share with you a very simple outline, a very simple outline to the book of Habakkuk. 
That is some good tea. Mm. Now, Habakkuk can be simply outlined in the following way. Many outlines out there, but this is very simple. I like that. <laughs> Habakkuk's first complaint, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. The Lord's first response, chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. Habakkuk's second complaint, chapter 1, verse 12, through chapter 2, verse 1. Habakkuk's second complaint, the Lord's second response. Chapter 2, verses 20, I'm sorry, verses 2 through 20. And then a closing prayer offered by Habakkuk, chapter 3. Let me go over that simple outline again. I got distracted. Outline, simply. Habakkuk's first complaint, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. The Lord's first response, chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. Habakkuk's second complaint, chapter 1, verse 12 through chapter 2, verse 1. The Lord's second response, chapter 2, verses 2 through 20. And then, chapter 3, Habakkuk's closing prayer. Now, as we study together the book of Habakkuk, it's not going to be a very long study. Maybe three Wednesdays, maybe four. But as we study the book of Habakkuk together and read through the book, this is the outline that we're going to follow. Very simply. Well, this is really all I wanted to share with you today as an overview, as an introduction. Next week is when we begin our in-depth study and reading of Habakkuk. So I have your assignment and a few questions. Please continue to do this. It's very simple. They keep us on track together. They help keep our focus together. If you don't turn in your answers, that's okay as long as you look at them and think through them. So your assignment next week is read Habakkuk 1, 1 through 11. Read Habakkuk 1, 1 through 11, and then answer the following two questions. One, even though Habakkuk asked a lot of questions, what were his main concerns? Even though Habakkuk asked a lot of questions, what were his main concerns? Please provide your supportive verses, your references. And two, what was the Lord's answer to Habakkuk's complaint? Again, provide your scripture support, your scriptural reference support. Again, your assignment next week, read chapter 1, 1 through 11, and then answer the questions. One, even though Habakkuk asked a lot of questions, what were his main concerns? Provide your scripture proof. And two, what was the Lord's answer to Habakkuk's complaint? Again, please provide your scripture reference proofs. Very simple. Well, I'm looking forward to this study. Habakkuk, you know, want to encourage you, don't think that there's nothing that we can apply because there is. Sometimes... The applications are vague. Sometimes you may not agree with what I think of as applications. There may not be specific applications, but the most important thing is that you and I are studying the Word of God together. That's the most important thing. You, 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 you spend your time in the Word, whether you do it with me online or you do it on your own private personal time. Either way, you're studying the Word. And I encourage you to continue doing that. Very important. Especially as the end times are coming. You know, Jesus is coming soon. Remember that from Sunday? Morning, night, or noon. We don't know when He's going to return. Um, but how better to be found than studying the Word? Come right now as we're studying the Word. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? What a hope, what a future we have. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, I hope that you continue to have a great day, a great rest of your week. And if I don't see you during prayer team uh, on Wednesdays at 1, then I'll see you Sunday, maybe some other time around town. Who knows? 
We well, love you. Let's pray together, and we will call it a Bible study today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for truly speaking to our hearts and minds powerfully, sometimes quietly in those little whispers, those little moments that you speak. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that you haven't given up on us, that you still find us usable. Father, use us this week. Use us in the life of someone who needs encouraging, someone who needs uplifting. Allow us to be your hands and feet today, this week, for someone who is hurting, someone who may not know you. Use us to show, to reveal you, your goodness, your glory, your love, your compassion. Use us as examples of that. Thank you for using us. Thank you for using our church. Continue to use Emmanuel in our community. Fathers, we prepare for the rest of our week. If this is the first time that we've looked at the Word, Lord, may it be richly implanted. May some of these thoughts as we read it over the next few weeks, uh, some of the scripture thoughts, the applications, may they really, really grow and live within us as we act on what we hear. Thank you for Habakkuk. Thank you for what you're going to teach us through it. We love you, and we know, we know that you love us. We don't understand why, <laughs> but we know that you do. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Well, again, I love you, and if I don't see you before then, see you Sunday.